And so chick chocolates, that's a very interesting uh, packaging as well. How did chick chocolates come into being? Uh, chicks chocolates were a, a concept that I conceived within 30 days of being um, involved in the business because I, I looked around and I saw what my competitors were doing and what was on the shelf and I thought it's also very um, conservative, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of foils and earth tones and, you know, nobody was doing anything fun and they weren't really marketing to women. It was interesting. They were marketing chocolate as a gift that men give women and I thought that is totally missing the mark. That is not how I or my friends eat chocolate. We eat it every day and we buy it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I came up with this idea, what it's really about is chocolate for chicks. Oh, yes. chick chocolates. And then it took a couple of years to actually launch it because I had to get sort of the house in order. You know, mm -hmm. it was just a new organization. And, and when I finally launched it, it was so well received by the press and by women. And it has pretty limited distribution because the, a lot of the retailers are like, it's too different. We don't get it. Uh -huh. So that's been, un but it's been, our, it's still our number one seller on our own website. So it's it's been a great success. Fabulous. And so... A part of the Chick program is the Survivor Chick. You want to tell us the story about how Survivor Chick came into being? Yeah, uh, Survivor Chick was kind of a personal thing that I did. Um, a few years ago, I had, um, as many of us do, um, a scare after a mammogram where they found a lump and you know had to go through the weeks of waiting with biopsies and that kind of thing. And during that time, your mind goes to scary places. You know, mm -hmm. what am I going to do with my eight-year-old? She's really going. She needs a mother, kind of thing. Feeling sorry for yourself, scared. So I went into my marketing department the day I was going to learn the results of the biopsy and whether this was cancer and said, regardless, <clears throat> excuse me, regardless, we need to do something to give back to uh, for cancer research. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my mother-in-law died of breast cancer. That's a direct, you know, lineage to my daughter. We need to do something. And as a female-owned company, I think we're in a unique position to be able to do that, especially with chocolate. Mm -hmm. So we came up with the idea of the survivor chick, and 100% of the profits from the sale of the survivor chick go towards cancer research. Fabulous. But then you found a little anomaly in that. Yes. Um, what we found with retailers, again, um, you're dependent upon the, the retailers to be able to s sell your products. And what we were finding was because she was dressed up in pink and had the ribbon and it was definitely Survivor and all about cancer, they were only bringing the product in as sort of a Breast Cancer Awareness Month uh, seasonal in and out product and it was really limiting our sales. So we decided to um, make it 100% uh, of the profits from another one of our products, one of our better selling products. And so we picked the, um, the Extreme Bar, which was already dressed in pink coincidentally. And so we just put a subtle little ribbon on the back, and we didn't really sell it as a, you know, a cancer thing. Mm -hmm. But women could learn about it if they wanted to, and they, it, we'd let the product pave the way for the cancer. Absolutely. And it's such a great way to give back, to make chocolate, which does so much good for our, ourselves and makes us happy, to also make chocolate earn some money for a very worthy cause. Well, and it's women being able to help women in a very small way that also helps them. You know, it's loaded. They're going to eat chocolate anyway. Exactly. <laughs> Why not feel good about it? Yeah, exactly. So high quality, freshest ingredients, very important to you. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the packaging is what draws people's eye and gets them to try it for the first time. And we always say that if we can get our chocolate in someone's mouth, they'll, be, they'll understand and they'll be a believer and they'll, they'll buy it again. Mm -hmm. But how do you get it in their mouth? I mean, you've got to have great packaging, but once it's in there, then it all comes down to, was it a great experience? Mm -hmm. And chocolate is all about tasting good. And you don't, you know, yes, there's lots of health benefits associated, which gives us the permission to eat it, where we used to have to hide it in our desk before maybe. But at the end of the day, if it's not smooth, it's not creamy, it doesn't taste great, I'm not gonna eat it again. So what we do, we understand with food, quality in, quality out. So we use all natural ingredients and a great chocolate that we source the world for and are constantly looking for a better one. And we have yet to find one that we think tastes better and smoother and more chocolatey. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's all about the quality and the taste. It's all about the quality and the taste. And then you wrapped it up in beautiful packaging, which will attract a person's eye. Not only that, you made sure to get a distribution network that got your chocolates where people typically are to buy. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, one of the things I realized was that as a busy woman professional, um, I am the target audience, um, I don't have time to shop around to chocolate boutiques. I just, I don't have time, it's not on my list. And one of the things that we've learned is that chocolate is usually never on a shopping list. <laughs> it's a spontaneous purchase that you make. So I thought, well, where do I shop? I'm at the grocery store, you know, maybe two or three times a week. Some people are there every day. And they're looking for milk and eggs, and they have a little bit of a need for a pick-me-up, and that's where they see the chocolate. So the chocolate had to be there. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And we had the ability with our machinery and our capacity to make a lot of chocolate. And chocolate has a natu natural chocolate has a, a one year shelf life minimum. So it's kind of a good fit. We could get our chocolates cross country into you know all 50 states and we're in over 8,000 grocery stores right now. Mm -hmm. And that's where women shop. Yay. Yay. So a huge distribution network, a new packaging, lots of color, bright things to look at. It's a home run. I hope. Yes. <laughs> Yay. So is there anything else, Jean, that, that we haven't covered that you'd like the viewer to know about Seattle Chocolates, about the brand, about the packaging, anything else? Well, um, you know, while it is in every state and, you know, all those grocery stores, sometimes uh, you can't find it in your own backyard. We do have a website, mm -hmm. www.seattlechocolate.com. And so you can buy the product there if you really need to give it a try and give it as a gift. Um, it is accessible in every way. Oh, very good. So I just want to be really clear on that. It's seattlechocolate.com or seattlechocolates.com? No, they both work. Either way. Yeah, it's hard to get that out, so we just made that we, we own them both. Smart. <laughs> very smart. Well, again, I want to thank you so much for being here with us today. I appreciate all the great information on these wonderful chocolates. And, and thank you for bringing the samples. I think we're going to have some. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for having me, Zita. You're so welcome. And I want to thank you for watching Biz Talk with Zita. And we'll see you next time.